Hello and welcome to the 10th part of this Pygame tutorial. I listened to some of your comments and I know people are talking about doing some like jumping over stones and also people are wanting to learn how to draw an image onto like the sprite sheets. So we're going to go over that. So let's get started. So first thing you want to do is you want to right click on image and open in Explorer. Now we can go into our IMG file and let's go to our terrain one file. And if you right click on it and just hit edit, that'll open it in paint, or at least it does on my computer. If not, you might need to set up what you open with. So now we got this open. If you hold control and scroll up, you can zoom in and you can actually see the individual pixels. So what we're going to want to do is we're going to want to draw our stones right here in a 32 by 32 square. And we'll leave our background white because that's what we're going to ignore when drawing it. So that'll remain transparent. So we can select like this circle here and let's leave it black. And let's just draw a big circle or oval in the middle. And that looks too thick. So control Z will undo. And let's make this size a little thinner. So let's go down to our smallest size here. Now let's do a big circle, like for our first part of the rock. And then let's draw some other circles outside of it, or ovals. Once we're done, let's make sure that we are inside of our squares. What we can do is we can scroll in a little bit more, grab that top square, and if you'll watch down here, it'll show you which pixel you're on. So if you get up here, you can see 3296. You'll want to remember those coordinates whenever we get back over into the program, because that's what we're going to use to find this piece. So let's start there and let's form a square around it. And if you'll notice next to it, It shows you actually how many pixels. So there is 32 by 32, if you'll notice. So that's perfect. It shows it right here 32 by 32. So we've got the perfect size. So let's go ahead and fill it with a dark gray on here, and then let's do a light gray for the smaller rocks. And we'll keep that. Now I'll just hit save. And we're finished here. So we can close that out. And now we're back into our program. So let's start creating our stones. First thing we want to do is we want to create the stone sprite. Let's create it right underneath the tree. Glass stone then we'll do the same pi game dot sprite dot sprite now we'll define in it to initialize and we also want to plug in game x and y so this will mostly be the same on these parts right here so we'll just copy this Save ourselves some trouble here and paste. The only thing we really want to change here is we want to change this to stones instead of trees. And then we are going to have to do a layer update for that. So before we finish this class, let's go ahead and put the layer update over here. So you'll go under the new function and let's just keep it organized. So let's put it right under tree as well. We'll do self dot stones equals pi game dot sprite dot layer updates make sure to call it and let's go back to our sprites and let's continue our class so we'll do self dot image equals self dot game dot terrain sprite sheet 
because it's on the same sheet as everything else we've got going, like the trees and everything. So we're going to pull it off the same terrain sprite sheet. So we'll do dot get sprite. And if you remember the coordinates that we did earlier, that was 32 and 96. So we're going to start at that point, and then we are going to create it at the size of tile size, which we have in the config file, which is 32. So that's basically just going to keep it uniform and go 32 by 32. So we'll do tile size, tile size for our width and height. So next we'll do self.rect equals self.image.getRect. Just like before, it's just pulling it out to make it interpret it as a rectangle. So then we'll do self.rect.x and self.rect.y equals self.x and self.y. So we're just bundling the variables. This plugs into this and this plugs into this. So now we are going to set image. So self image dot set color key and we'll do white as well. And what that does is it makes the background transparent. So now we have our stone sprite. Now, of course, in order to call this into the map, we need to make it where build map interprets it. So let's just call it S for this. So let's just add another if column down here. So if column double equals S, then we'll do stone. And then we'll plug in self, J, and I for the X and Y coordinates. Now then, we need to actually have this come into play. So we want to actually see this. So let's go over to our map. And let's just replace some of these trees with stones. Actually, you know what? Just put it right here. Let's just put a couple stones right here just so we can see that our class is working right. So we should have three stones there when we play. So hit play, start, let's just use boss. And there is our three stones that we just drew. Of course, we can walk right over them because we haven't created any kind of collision with them yet. So let's do that next. Close the game. And we'll go to our player.py. And let's go back under trees again. And now trees are going to have very similar attributes to our stone. So let's go ahead and copy all of this. And we'll just edit what we need to. Because initially we do want it to stop on the stones. So let's do stones. So first thing we're going to do is we are going to pull in the global player speed. And what that does is that makes sure that your function understands that it is pulling the variable from a global point. So we'll do global player speed. And that's going to make sure that it pulls it from the configuration file player speed. And anything we plug in will go back to this. So we can actually modify the global. Next. We want to find out if this is jumping or not. And if it is, we want the speed to pick up a little bit so it'll kind of hop. So we'll do if self dot is jump. Then player speed equals six. Else player speed goes back to what it was, which is three. But we haven't created is jump yet. So let's go up here. And at the bottom of player, let's go ahead and create self dot is jump equals false. That way automatically we are not jumping. Okay, so that cleared out that error. So next, we want it to only collide 
if we're not jumping. And if we're jumping, we want it to move through it. That way it appears to be jumping over it. So what we are going to do here is we're going to do and self dot is jump is not true. Let's copy this and paste it down here as well. Of course, we got to make sure to change trees to stones. And that should be what we need to do for now. Now we need to make it where we've actually got a jump. So let's go up here to our keys. And let's do if keys my game dot. And I think the V key is going to be good because it's right above the space bar. I mean, if I had to do it all over again, I'd go ahead and change the space bar to the jump. And we can do that later on. You guys, just let me know what you think. But for now, let's just put it to V. And then in order to keep it from like jumping multiple times and sending you right off the screen, we're going to make it where if you're not jumping, then it'll jump. But it'll only allow you to jump if you're not jumping. So if not is jump or self dot is jump then self dot is jump was true and now what we need to do is we need to update this where it's going to be checking to see if it's jumping so we will do keep it organized let's do self dot Slide stones, and we'll plug in x here. Then here we'll do self dot collide stones. We'll do y here. So let's go in here to our key v, and let's do. Let's go ahead and do self dot up speed, which we haven't created yet, but we want that to equal negative seven because it draws from the top down, so your Y's will be one, two, three, and like walking down the screen. So we want it to go up. So in order to do that, we gotta use a negative number. So, let's create a default up speed. So we'll do that in our initialize player. So let's do self dot up speed equals zero. All right, so let's define our jump. So let's just put it right here underneath the update. Go define jump self. Now we'll do if self dot is jump, then self dot rect dot y, which is just taking the y coordinates of the rectangle around our image, plus equals self dot up speed then we will do if self dot rect dot y is greater than eight times tile size which is about where our character is at normally so that's why I used that all I did is I just came over here and I just counted how far down he was. So we were like one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight down. That's where he starts. So eight times tile size. If he goes past that, we want him to automatically come back to that position so he doesn't just keep falling. So then we'll do self dot rect dot y equals eight times tile size. Got our colon here. And then we want to set our up speed to zero so that it doesn't keep falling as well. 
and we want to set self dot is jump false and then if it doesn't do any of this we want it to actually add one to the speed so it doesn't just keep going up so if we add one to the up speed it'll slow down and then it'll start coming back the other way as it becomes a positive number so what we want to do here is we want to do else and then self dot up speed plus equals to add one every time then one and remember print is your best friend on anything like this so if you're ever having problems with your function just put in print so sometimes what i'll do is i'll just like put like print one here and then i'll print two here print three here. What this will do is this will help me to be able to see down here what parts are hitting and what parts aren't. So we want to make sure that it's calling our jump on every update to check it. So we'll do self.jump. Now let's try this out. So play, start, let's use boss. And he's jumping. As you can see down here, we can see that it's hitting the first part here and then it's going okay so it's not eight yet so it hits down here and it that's why it prints a three so it's, it's going through this and then it's hitting three and then once it hits eight then it's going to hit the second part of the function as you can see here so it goes one three one three one three one three and then oh one two and then it stops and that's when we land so that's just a little trick i use sometimes to fix errors now let's check our stones Okay, so if we walk up to them, we collide with them, but if we jump, we jump into them, but we bounce back. We don't want it to really do that. I mean, we are bouncing over them, but we want to fix. So what we want it to do is we want it to stay in the middle of our screen. So let's close that out. And let's go to our maps. Do you notice where our player's at? We want them to be about at 10 times tile size over. So let's go back to our player and let's just do our update. Like every time it updates, let's just make sure that it resets us. So let's do here, let's do self.rect.x for our x coordinates and let's do 10 times tile size. And let's see if that fixes our issue. So we'll run over here and then we'll jump into them and you see it bounces us into the middle of the screen now instead of dragging us over. So that works pretty good for our stones. As you can see, we're not having too many problems here. If we do jump down, it centers us back. Now you guys will notice, I've found this issue as well already, is if you come over here, you can actually glitch it out and get outside of the map. If you just do this and jump, 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 you can kind of work your way out of the map. You just got to work at it a little bit and you bounce out. Um, I haven't found a fix for this yet. If you guys find a good fix for it, let me know. But other than that, I guess that'll end this part of the Pi Game tutorial. If you guys want, I'll add some sound to it to make him like make a noise when he jumps. If you guys are interested in learning how to make sounds and stuff like that, I'll be sure to do a tutorial. Just let me know in the comments. Other than that, be sure to like and subscribe, and I'll see you guys next time.